Everybody's having a nice evening. Is it warming up out there? Yeah. A little bit? At least it rained, right? That was nice. Well, uh, my name is Jeff Glover. I'll be your MC tonight. I'd like to remind everybody, if you <clears throat> take pictures, that's fine. Just please don't use your flag. Uh, it makes me fall around. Uh, and also, if you uh, have a cell phone, you might want to turn it off because you don't want to be that person that, you know, you don't want to be that guy. So you want to turn off your cell phone. Uh, again, I'd like to welcome you all tonight. We've got a great show this evening. Uh, the first band here that we have tonight is my personal favorite band. This may be the best band. <laughs> uh, y'all know that joke by now. Well, uh, we're going to play for you. This is the Glover Family Band. I love 
songs of the Civil War. Uh, it's called Wayfaring Stranger. Uh, this is another song we're not entirely sure, entirely sure where it came from or who wrote it. Um, but uh, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a song about a song from the perspective of a young man uh, that realizes he's about to die. And uh, I, I suspect that that's probably why people related to it so well during the Civil War. It's called The Wayfaring Stranger.
also called the Texas Drifter. Um, he wrote some really good old songs and um, you should check him out I, I, on, uh, on uh, I don't know what you check him out on. He's, you can't hardly buy his CDs anymore but he's, he said he taught Jimmy Rogers how to yodel and he yodels just like him which I'll not be doing. Anyway this is a pretty old song he does called uh, Hobo's Lullaby. Go to sleep you weary hobo let the town drift slowly by can't you hear steel rail humming that's a hobo's lullaby don't worry about tomorrow let tomorrow Safe from all the wind and snow. This one came from a story my dad told me, pretty much true, called Lost Man's Creek. Born in Sun number seven in the line of eleven to a man named Jesse Lee. To an Indian mother with a heart of gold, he grew up fast and lean. Sun up, sun down. Just enough to eat. Come at night, he'd be slipping off to meet Rosalie, so sweet. Now Rosalie had a mean old pa, she was his only child. Then her mama had died when she was young, she grew up sweet and wild. To meet Willie at the creek. They go down the mountain to the holler. He'd go first, then she'd follow. Moonlit nights, 
soft and sweet down on Lost Man's Creek. And he followed up to the Boston Mountains, General Isaac Pillow. And working to him, Rosalie had given him a son. He knew that he'd be slipping off like an outlaw on a run. And Rosalie had left her mean old pa. She took her baby boy. She followed up to the Boston Bridge to find her only joy. Mm -hmm. There in those foggy mountains, that man had slipped away. And the old man and the infantry still search for them today. They go down the mountain to the hut. He go first and she Soft and sweet Down on Lost Man's Creek He said, I only brought her because there, there's never been anybody shorter than me. So this is the second time we'll prove to the world that good things come in small packages. Marsha Hammer and her husband uh, run the Court Square RV Park. And Marsha comes up to the senior center where I work and uh, plays music with some of the, the groups up there. And uh, we just thought we'd have her play a few songs with us tonight. So we're going to do uh, Amazing Grace, it will be our first song, uh, one of the most published, most recorded songs in the history of American gospel music, and uh, everybody knows this, can you see, is that right? Okay, here we go. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. recorded song in the history of American gospel music for you in the key of D. And this will be our last song. 
Thank you for being here listening to us. We love all of you. Thank you to Marsha and Nathan and Sam. And here we go. I have some glad morning when this life is over. I will fly away to waiting on God's celestial shore.
It is very nice to be here. Thank you. Well, Elwood and I have been coming here, I think, for almost 20 years. I was three and he was five when we first came. <laughs> and we've been playing together for 27 years. And the first song we're going to play to you tonight is the, the first song I ever saw Elwood play. The, the, one of the first times I ever laid eyes on him. We were at a folk club in Providence, Rhode Island. And he was singing this song with his children, who were very young at the time, and he was a single father. And he sang this beautiful song from Newfoundland called Sonny's Dream, written by a fellow named Ron Hines. Sunny, don't go away. I'm here alone. Your daddy is a sailor who never comes home. Nights are so long. Silence goes on. I'm feeling so tired and not all that strong. Sunny lives on the farm in a wide open space. Take off your shoes, son, stay out of the race. Lay down your head by the soft river bed. Sunny always remembers the words his memory. Sunny, don't go away. I'm here all alone. Your daddy's a sailor who never comes home. Nights are so long. Silence goes on. I'm feeling so tired and not. All that's strong. Some of you may, have, have any of you been there? Wow, that's pretty good for this size audience. <laughs> three, three, three people. 38, 38 by 48 miles. That's the whole state. But 384 miles of coast. So chances are, if you live in Rhode Island, you live pretty close to the water somewhere. We live in an old fashioned, post-manufacturing town that builds boats and produces seafood, among other things. 
So lately, I just lately, partly by coincidence, we've been learning a lot more seafaring songs. And here's a beauty from 1847. These sailors have been gone for almost three years. The farmer's heart with joy is filled when the crops are good and sound. But who can feel the wild delight of the sailor's homeward bound? For three long years have passed away since we left old freedom's shore. Our long felt wish has come at last, and we're homeward bound once more. And we're homeward bound once more To where the skies is clear As the maiden's eye Who longs for our return To the land where milk and honey flows And liberty was born So fill our sails With favoring gales And with shipmates all around Our starry flag and the Jamestown homeward bound and the Jamestown homeward bound. Arrived in port and stripping's our last job. And friendly faces look around in search of bill or bar. They see that we are safe at last from the perils of the sea. Say welcome, Columbia's mariners, to your homes and liberty. To your homes. Starry flag and the Jamestown homeward bound and the Jamestown homeward bound. Specializes in folk music in the Boston area. And this young man who works there said, Aubrey? And he identified himself. It was Lucas Poole from Mountain New York. <laughs> and then we became friends on Facebook immediately, because we, we were delighted to see one another and we chatted. And then he played a new banjo he had just made on a little video clip and posted it on Facebook. And this is the banjo. Oh. I did an unusual thing. I, I bought an instrument. I don't buy a lot of instruments, but I fell in love with that sound on Facebook, and then we met again, and I bought it on the spot. So isn't that neat? And I brought it all the way back to Mountain View. <laughs> we will have Gresham McMillan join us on bass, the wonderful Gresham. And do a song that my husband Elwood wrote just have to make sure this is all nicely in tune. After I sat down one evening on the couch to relax, watch a movie, and I looked at my husband and I said, if you ever leave me, I'm going with you. <laughs> so he wrote this song about something akin to that. Never will we go, we 
How many of you are participating in the workshops and the events at Dance Days? Woohoo! It's true, I'm the only freestyle clogger in the state of Rhode Island that performs and teaches. So it's a unique distinction. And uh, it's not that impressive sounding when you're talking about the smallest state. But I love to clog, and I'm going to be teaching a lot this weekend flat footing, old fashioned flat footing. I learned to dance on the road, I learned to dance by meeting people and having them show me steps. So we're going to have a lot of fun this whole weekend. You guys ready? We just have to batten down the hatches here. Oh, I'll, just, I'll start if you want. How's that?
sing for my friends Then let's go for my sea When I reach my journey's end Tell me who will sing for me I wonder who will sing By the silent sea Tell me who will sing for me
Frank Shaver and Rachel Porat. Well, they make it look easy, don't they? I don't think I can make it through a whole one of those things. It makes me more out just watching them do that. Uh, it's uh, Roger Fountain, you know, he plays the fiddle. Roger plays a lot of music around here. I've uh, been playing it for a long time. Uh, Mike Sutter, same way. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, welcome the Flat Hoof String Band. <laughs> going to do um, Blackberry Blossom and then we're going to do a waltz and I'm going to sing it uh, because it's Irene Goodnight, but it's a great waltz tune. All right, let's best-selling song in the early 1900s. Stop 
your midnight ramble. Stop staying up late at night. Come home now, babe, and hang out with me by that fireside light. This is an old dance, well, I don't know, I kind of think it's fun and dancey. It's called Five Foot Two. And uh, when the troops came back from World War I, this was a national bestseller song. And uh, it's kind of a fun old thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Gresham is going to be featured on this. He can play that bass like nobody in the world. I'd say he's one of the best in this part of the country. Also, Roger Thompson here, our fiddler, was International Bluegrass Fiddler of the Year, three years running. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's a long time ago, but it doesn't matter, you know? I mean, it's, you know, he's, he's as good as it gets. And Wes Kent over here is playing the mandolin and the banjo, and he's been all over the world doing that. And uh, he's, he's just, what can I say? He's, he's, he's played in Russia and South America, I mean, you name it. And I was a staff guitarist here for a number of years, too. But uh, anyway, we'll go with this. Oh, wait, I use finger picks on that. <laughs> yeah, that's going to sound bad without the picks. I forgot. It. Yeah, I play a number of styles. So anyway, this is just take a minute. Yeah. I heard Phil talking about his new hearing aid, and uh, he uh, really liked it. His friend asked him what kind it was, and he says, it's two thirty. <laughs> yeah. We're the same age. <laughs> A five foot two covered with her diamond rings and all those things you can bet your life it isn't her cause turned up no your life holds popper yes sir one of those has anybody seen my girl Chico, Chico, has anybody seen my girl? Well, if you run into a five foot two covered with fur, diamond rings and all those things, you can bet your life it isn't her, cause turned up nose, turned out hoes, clapper, yes sir, one of those, has anybody seen my girl? Okay. Five foot two covered with fur, 
diamond rings and all those things. You can bet your life it isn't her best turned up nose, turned down hoes, flatter. Yes, sir, one of those. Has anybody seen my girl? Bonds found it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. 
Chuck, apologize. And I heard the sea, the evening sun go down. Well, I hate to see the evening sun go down. It makes old Michael think now all about my let's go round. So you all come and see us by and by, and then I'll go, you all come, and you answer, okay? It's real simple, and uh, it's a fun song. It's been around a long time. When you live in the country, everybody is your neighbor. There's one thing you can't rely on. Well, they'll all come and see you, but they won't ever leave you. Say, you all come and see us by and by. Y'all come. Y'all come. Y'all come.
Folks, what do you get when you cross Superman with Grizzly Adams? You get Dave Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Did you hear about the uh, the two antennas that got married? <laughs> no. Well, the wedding was, wasn't much, but the reception was great. <laughs> Some folks say a man is made out of mud. Some folks are made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood, flesh and bone, a mind that's weak. Back this strong, you load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in bed. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine. I loaded 16 times, a number nine coal. And the straw boss said, well, bless my soul, you load 16 times. Now what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. I was born one morning, it was drizzle and rain. Fighting and trouble are my middle name. I was raised in a cane break by an old mama line. Can't no high tone woman make me walk the line. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in the St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. If you see me come, better step aside. A lot of men didn't, and a lot of men died. I got one fist of iron, the other is steel. If the right one don't get you, then the left one will. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul. Song. You remember that from hearing that on the radio back years ago, Tennessee Ernie Ford sang it is? Written by uh, Merle Travis wrote that. We have a, a little festival to honor him every spring here. But it was our folk song. Hey, this thing, this is what happens when you uh, wash your banjo in too hot water. <laughs> it's a great little instrument. It's a uh, banjo ukulele. Um, banjos were all the rage back uh, around the turn of the century, the late 1800s and the early, very early 1900s. Um, there were whole orchestras of banjos, uh, from little bitty banjos like this to big bass banjos, big, huge, big, like a bass banjo. Um, there was even a, there was even an instrument called a banjarine. It's like a banjo, but easier to peel. <laughs> this is a, this is a song written by Jimmy Driftwood. Um, he lived in Stone County for many, many years. He had a lot to do with the building of this uh, great. Uh, place we're in tonight. Um, he was a folklorist and collected songs and wrote songs and this is one he wrote. It talks about the year of 82 but it's not uh, 1982 and it's not 1882, it's actually 1782, right uh, right after the Revolutionary War. Um, apparently there were a lot of widows around and uh, that's what this song's about. It's called The Widders of Bowling Green. To old Kentucky in the year of 82 And Uncle Sam was just a young and hungry lad The war killed a lot of men And set their women free And I had the winter fever mighty bad I squired him in the country And I squired him in the town Every gal I courted was a queen I nearly lost the fever When a feller said to me That there ain't no winters left in Bowling Green So hang up the fiddle and the banjo Put up the tambourine The boys are all coming in They're taking up the land And there ain't no winters left in Bowling Green Fever 
settled in my old backbone, it got into my liver and my spleen. The doctor said he'd cure me, but there's not much he could do, cause there ain't no winners left to Bowling Green. I ordered me a dozen from the state of Caroline, but I had the darndest luck you ever seen. The neighbors stopped the wagon train and took them every one, and there ain't no winners left in Bowling Green. So hang up the fiddle and the banjo, put out the tambourine. The boys are all coming and they're taking up the land, and there ain't no winners left in Bowling Green. Big break. songs that are old, that are newer, as long as they kind of meet the criteria and fit in here with what we do at the Folk Center. And this is a great song, and I was thinking about it today because I was thinking about Mr. Dodd and the Dodd family and how far back they go. And it's a song written by a fellow from West Virginia named Cy Khan, and his family goes way back on their land as well. It's called Gone, Gonna Rise Again. Remember the year that my granddaddy died, gone, gonna rise again. We dug his grave on the mountainside, gone, gonna rise again. I was too young to understand what he felt about the land. But I could read his history in his hands, gone, gonna rise again. There's corn in the crib and apples in the bin Gone, gonna rise again Ham in the smokehouse and cotton in the gym Gone, gonna rise again Cattle in the shed and hogs in the lot I guess we never had a lot But we work for the, we work like the devil For the little we got Gone, gonna rise again There's apple trees growing on the mountainside, gone, gonna rise again. He planted the seeds just before he died, gone, gonna rise again. I guess he knew he'd never see ripe fruit hanging from the tree. But he planted the seeds for his children and me, gone, gonna rise again. High on the ridge above the farm, gone, gonna rise again. I think of the people who have gone on, gone, gonna rise again. Like the tree that grows on the mountain ground, storms of life will cut it down. But there's a new life springing from the roots in the ground, gone, gonna rise again. about his great-grandfather, Ed Yancey, on his mother's side, also lived a fox from way, way back, one of the first settlers there. Ab was, there's, they still talk about Ab today because he was a good hand at lining bees. You know what lining bees is? It's kind of a lost art. But it used to be, back in the old days, you couldn't just go down a store and buy sugar. Sugar and sweetening was very, very rare. 
So people would hunt bee trees. Well, how do you find a bee tree in the woods? These guys would set out a little jar lid of honey, or if they didn't have any honey, they would actually use urine because it's sweet. And they would set it out, and they'd sit there on a rock and wait, and wait, and finally a bee would come along and find it. And when the bee fills up and heads back to the nest, it goes in a bee line, a straight line back home. And these guys, only guys with really good eyesight could do this, but they'd watch that bee and they'd see where it went, and they'd go in that direction. And if they lost the trail, they'd set out their little jar again and sit on a rock. People had a lot of time in those days. And wait, and pretty soon a bee would come, and they'd follow it, and they'd follow it to the bee tree. Now, Uncle Ab Yancey was one of the best bee liners around. He was great at it. And in the spring of 1836, he was following bees down in southwestern Stone County, now near where I live, where in the valley of what is now the Little Red River, but nobody even hardly knew about it at that time. It was new country for everybody. Well, he followed these bees, and he found a place where the whole bluff, the whole mountainside, it was a sheer 100-foot rock bluff, and it was completely covered with beehives. There was bee bee comb and, and bee bread hanging down 40 foot long, and there were millions of bees, and a guy could never make a smoker, you know, make enough smoke to smoke that many bees out to get the honey. But Ab was a smart guy. He came down here to Mountain View to the land office, and he homesteaded 160 acres up on top of the bee bluff um, in, on what's now Angora Mountain. And uh, they moved up there, and they built a cabin. After the cabin was done, and the, the uh, corn was laid by, he put his boys to work digging a well. Now they dug for a couple of months there, and one day when they were down about 40 feet, one of them saw a little trick or yellow come from the bottom of the well. And they hollered for old Ab, and he come down that bucket rope and, and tasted of it and said, Boys, we've struck honey. Just cap this well off. We'll just sell honey for the rest of our lives be rich people. That's exactly what they did. They'd pull up buckets of honey out of that honey well, and put it in barrels and send it off to Little Rock and Springfield, and well, they, the Yancey family was the richest family around at that time. But all good things come to an end. They, they, got, into a, they got into a scrap with the Huggins boys down at uh, Shirley, some kind of family feud. There were a couple of killings over it. And one night the Huggins boys snuck up there and dropped about 100 pounds of gunpowder down the honey well. And when they touched it off, the whole face of the mountain blew off into the Red River Valley, and it completely ruined the honey market for years and years and years. People wanted long sweet, and they just go down and dip water out of the river. And if you go down to Shirley, Arkansas today, where you cross the river down on Highway 9, and you go down the river, and you dip a little bit of water out of the river and taste it, it tastes sweet to this day. That's fact. <laughs> feel long, and they usually involve a lot of death and stabbings and such. And, and uh, you hear them now, and they sound kind of boring, but that was back in the day when the only time you heard me hear it come out of somebody's mouth and heard their fiddle or their banjo play it. And so people ate that stuff up. And there were ballad singers in this country, and there still are a few, but not very many are left. And I, this is a song uh, written by Charlie Sandage, a contemporary songwriter who's here. He wrote this uh, about three ladies who were famous ballad singers. Emma Dusenberry came with her family. Her father was a sawmiller, and he came from Georgia and settled in South Arkansas, where the big pines are. And uh, she Although she was blind, she kept herself going by singing songs. And, and when John Lomax came around, a folklorist back in the early part of the 20th century, he recorded many, many of her songs, hundreds of songs that she had learned from her mother and her mother's mother. The next one is Ollie Gilbert, who uh, lived here in Mountain View. Uh, she sang on this stage many days, in the early days, when the folk center opened, played the banjo, knew lots of jokes. Um, she was a great lady in town. And the other is Alameda Riddle from Heber Springs, Arkansas, who also played on this stage and is now passed on like the other ladies. Um, her father was a shape note singer and wrote shape note songs, and uh, she, she lost part of her family in a terrible tornado that hit Heber Springs, I think, in 1952. So this is a song called They Sang. From northern Georgia hills, Emma sang, Emma sang. Her mother's songs and many more she sang on. Even when her sight was gone, kings and bandits still lived on. In the pictures in her songs, Emma sang, Emma sang. Where the pines were cut and sawn, she sang on. If you knocked upon her door, Ollie sang, Ollie sang. 
Her mother sobs and hundreds more she sang on. Are you family? Are you friend? Are you stranger? Welcome in. Banjo tunes and tales begin. Ollie sang, Ollie sang. She journeyed far and home again while she sang on. Hear hymns, hear fiddles too, Almeda sang, Almeda sang. See the shapes her father drew, she sang on. See the deed the storm has done, took her man and last born son. One life gone and one begun. Almeda sang, Almeda sang, till her time on earth had run, she sang on. Hear the thousand, thousand more, how they sang, how they sang, to the children that they bore, they sang on. <coughs> Stories, songs, and hymns of praise ease the burdens of their days. Taught us all their gentlest ways, how they sang, how they sang. Age by age and praise by praise, they sang all. musician she is. I'm sure we've spoken tonight about the dance weekend coming up here this weekend. It's a great time. Saturday night we have a great show. We test this stage out to see if it'll hold up for another year. So if you're around on Saturday, come back and see a great show here Saturday night. Uh, this is a song I wanted. I'll be here. I hope she's here. Um, you here? Yes. Okay, good. All right. She said she hadn't heard this. She's going to like this song. This is a song that covers a lot of stuff. It covers how the uh, banjo was invented, the invention of the banjo. It covers why the possum doesn't have any hair on its tail. And the story of Noah's Ark. So this is a very educational song. Let's, let's do it. Hush up all your fiddles for I'm tired of hearing you squawking. Be silent for your better. Can't you hear the banjo talking? About the possum's tail I'm gonna let your ladies listen. About the hair that isn't there and why that hair is missing. It's gonna come an overflow, said Noah, looking solemn. Oh, Noah took the herald and he read the river column. So he put his men to work at clearing timber patches. A lad is gonna build a boat to beat the steamer natches. Now Noah kept a hammer and a chipping and a sawing. And all his wicked neighbors kept a laughing and pshawing. But Noah didn't mind him, cause he knowed what's gonna happen. That for forty days and forty nights the rain would keep on rapping. Now Noah went and caught a lot of every sort of beasties, and all the traveling circuses he beat them all to pieces. He had some Morgan horses and a pair of Jersey cattle, and he put them on the ark when he heard the thunder rattle. With such another fall of rain it comes so awful heavy, the river is immediately and busted through the levee. The people always drowned except the Noah and the critters, and the men he had to run the boat and one to mix the bitters. And Noah kept a sailing and a sailing and a sailing. The lion got his dander up and I broke through the paling. The snakes they was a hissing and the critters was a fussing, till you could almost hear the boatman a bossing round and cussing. Now hand the only arky what was riding on the packet. Got lonesome in the ark, and he couldn't stand the racket. And so, for to amuse himself, he took some wood and bent it. And soon he had a banjo, the first that was invented. He took some leather, stretched it, and made bridge and screws and apron. And fitted on a neck that was very long and tapering. He took some tin and hammered out a bell for to ring it. And then the mighty question come on how he's gonna string it. Now the possum had a tail as fine as this that I'm a singing, with hair so long and neat and strong, just right for banjo stringing. So Hammy shaved him off as short as wash day dinner graces, and sorted him out by the size from little ease to bases. He strung her up to knock the tune called Never Mind the Weather. It sounded like 411 bands are playing all together. Some come to pat and some to dance, and Noah called the figures. 
And Hammy said to knock the tune of Hammy's mansion picker. Now since that day there's not a sign of any hair a growing, nor any hair at all upon the possum's tail a showing. Strange to the Arky's ways, his people never lost him. Cause where you find an Arky, there's a banjo and a possum. <laughs> Oh, the golden shoes that you hear so much about. Worn down here, then you soon wear them out. Gonna go off to heaven for to put on the robe. Gonna put on the golden shoes. I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'm going back south when the sun shines hot way down where the sugar cane grows. Don't let old Satan try to fool you. The gates will be closed and you can't get through. So prepare yourself for the judgment day, cause you can't take money and buy your way. I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'll I'm going back south where the sun shines hot way down where the sugar cane grows. What are you gonna do when the women are all dead? Gonna sit in the corner with a hung down head? If I had to marry then, I wouldn't marry for riches. I'd marry a little pork girl. Very little, very little short girl could wear my britches. I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'm going back south when the sun shines halfway down when the sugar cane grows. Oh, what kind of slippers is the angels wear? Slipping and then sliding on the golden stair. With the golden shoes and the hot tucks too. And right on the golden shoes. And I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'll rise when the rooster crows. I'm going back south when the sun shines halfway down when the sugar cane grows. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you for coming out and supporting us. Um, on your way out, if, if you happen to walk down the hill, please take the, the wooden stairs that go down the hill. You don't want to walk down that road with all these cars and buses going around and everything like that. And uh, in the words of my good friend Dave Branscombe, if you like what you heard tonight, please tell your friends. If you didn't like what you heard tonight, you keep your mouth shut. Thank you very much.